The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. El Salvador making a bold and historic move, raising $1 billion for Bitcoin bonds to build a Bitcoin city and buy more Bitcoin. While this has been widely celebrated by many in the crypto community, international organizations like the IMF have been less enthusiastic, releasing a report saying Bitcoin should not be used as legal tender and recommending a winding down of El Salvador's $150 million trust fund created to facilitate the exchange between Bitcoin and U.S. dollars. Joining us now to discuss is Ambassador of El Salvador to the United States, Milena Miorga. Hello there, Ambassador. A uh, pleasure to have you on the show. So Moody's has downgraded El Salvador partially because of the Bitcoin law making Bitcoin legal tender and the IMF is critical. They have a loan agreement with El Salvador worth over $1 billion. Now what El Salvador is embarking upon is incredibly ambitious, but are you concerned about burning bridges with international organizations? Not at all. Um, we're very enthusiastic as a government and President Bukele leadership. And we understand that he wants to move El Salvador to a different level. And that's why we implemented the Bitcoin law and the Bitcoin as a legal tender in El Salvador. And also the plans are, uh, you know, big. We're wanting to build the Bitcoin city, in which you can invest, have uh, a lot of advantages to live in and it's going to be a city of the of the future and i know uh, the concerns here in washington dc is about losing power you know losing the, the power of the dollar and we can understand that but el salvador has to move on and el salvador is wanted to as i said to be in a different level we have a past of 30 years of corruption <laughs> And our last leaders didn't didn't do like very intelligent moves, and that's why the people of El Salvador are understanding that President Bukele has a different view and a different leadership, and he's a very intelligent leader. So we are looking that the advantages. For example, we just had a, a lot of investors. Uh, tourism in El Salvador right now. El Salvador is in the spotlight around the world. And if our model uh, works and succeeds, a lot of countries are, are watching us. And that's why they're afraid of. Uh, Ambassador, just to follow up on that point, is there any element, so El Salvador is obviously betting big on Bitcoin. Um, is part of the strategy to get some sort of financial independence from institutions like the IMF or even some sort of independence from the United States? Is that is that a part of the consideration here? Well, right now, our cabinet are still working with the traditional financial system, but we want to move on and have different alternatives. And I think this is going to happen uh, sooner or later, not only for El Salvador, but different countries. Uh, right now, we have to do it in the tra traditional way. That's why uh, we have a dollar also as a legal tender in El Salvador. We don't have colonies anymore, which was our national currency. And um, right now, we have to deal with these two uh, legal tenders in my country in, and see how it works to have these two alternatives. I guess, thank you for that clarification. I, I guess my question is also just, you know, with the issuing of the Bitcoin bond, you know, El Salvador in the past has had some tension with the IMF as, as Christine referenced. Is this kind of a way for El Salvador to sort of depend on another, not depend or have another source of financing and thus, you know, grant itself a little bit of independence from the IMF specifically? As I said, we have two different legal tenders and we have to see two different ways of uh, founding our our government, our country. And that's why uh, the Bitcoin bonds, and uh, th this is a different strategy. And I understand that um, uh, they're afraid and their concerns, because if we succeed, as I said, a lot of uh, uh, countries are looking at us and they will follow, you know, our leadership. So it's, it's, 
it's a different way of, of you know financing uh, our government and uh, we'll see i think that the cabinet they're very smart our economic cabinet very smart and uh, they're looking different panoramas right now uh, madam ambassador thank you for coming on uh my question is, has the Biden administration expressed any opinion on this bond issuance to you uh, directly or to the government of El Salvador? And do you see El Salvador issuing bonds that aren't U.S. dollar denominated or even Bitcoin denominated, but let's say euro denominated anytime soon? Not yet. Not yet. We have conversations all the time and their concern was about the Bitcoin implementation in El Salvador but not about uh, the bonds. And I think we have to have the conversation, but we are, you know, an independent country. So they have uh, to accept our move our movements and understand that we, ha we are wanting to, to take El Salvador to a different level. And with the traditional system, it's very hard, very difficult for us. Is it, is it surprising that you haven't heard yet from the Biden administration? Did you expect to hear anything from them at all? They're very focused on different topics. Governance, uh, the, uh, right now, uh, a law that is in, in the General Assembly about the, the nonprofit organizations. So, you know, there's a lot of things that they are wanting to talk with us uh, today. I'm going to the Department of State and we'll see if they're going to talk about the Bitcoin bonds. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'll find out today. Ambassador, your, your U.S. counterpart, Jean Maines, left her position as U.S. ambassador to El Salvador, citing deteriorating relations with your country as the reason. Specifically, she said, why am I going to stay here if we don't have a counterpart at this time when El Salvador wants to talk? Our doors are always open. What do you think she means by that? I think Jean Maines was in my country with a different... Uh, politicians at that time i was in the congress i was a congresswoman and you know there, there was a different government and she tried to implement the same uh, tactics and you cannot do it you have to accept that the salvadorian populations uh, gave us the super majority in the congress and you know president bukele right now has 95 percent of approval national approval and if you see president biden he doesn't have any you know he doesn't have one year in government and he has very low approval so they have their own opinion we're always open to dialogue and to you know to put our uh, concerns in the table but we're independent country so they have to accept that, uh, you know, we have uh, our own decisions. Um, Ambassador, just going back to this big bet on Bitcoin. So one of the questions that some people in the crypto community have been raising is that, you know, Bitcoin is a famously volatile currency. And if Bitcoin continues to rise, then this could be really great for El Salvador. But if it crashes, it could be kind of problematic. So what is the plan if Bitcoin crashes or if Bitcoin doesn't rise to the extent that some people are hoping? Well, I think that question is for the, the economic cabinet uh, because you know they are, they are the ones that are implementing uh, all these uh, financial plans. But I understand that if they're doing this, it's because they have a, a, a goal that Bitcoin is going to uh, keep going up and we can have a profit of this bitcoin of course it goes up it goes down but we are uh, surrounded by the experts in cryptocurrencies well um let me tell you that we implemented the national wallet chivo wallet and i want to give you some numbers uh, in two months we have um, make the salvadorian people to be a part of this new system uh, around 80% of them right now, they are using the Chivo wallet and from the United States, they're sending the remittances at zero cost, uh, almost $32 million we have received in remittances through the Chivo wallet. And the Chivo wallet came uh, with the Bitcoin law. 
and the Chihuahua wallet make you decide if you want to send money in Bitcoin or in dollars. You know, it, the cost of sending remittances to El Salvador in the traditional system, uh, generally it costs you around 400 to 700 million dollars. And right now with the, with the Chihuahua wallet, they're not uh, spending any cent to send money to their families in El Salvador. So this is one of the big advantages. And also, you know, we have a lot of tourism right now in El Salvador and they were using the Chivo wallet to make transactions. And you can buy anything in El Salvador with Bitcoin. Uh, you can buy soda, pay taxes, pay hotels and everything. So, you know, it's a different country. Uh, right now we have different alternatives, but it's your choice. You can choose if you want to use dollar or bitcoin that's the wonderful thing uh, you know it's uh, we are land of freedom too so you can uh, decide if you want to send your remittances in dollar or bitcoin and use our national wallet or use the traditional system in which a lot of salvadorian people in the united states they don't have banking accounts there is tough for them because they don't have financial inclusion. And with the Chivo wallet, we are seeing that almost 4 million people are using it right now in two months. M more but, but, uh, download of this app than the traditional banking apps. Madam Ambassador, uh, these bonds will be listed on Bitfinex. Do you know if President Bukele met with Bit Bitfinex's CEO or CFO to discuss this? Well, he has been having a lot of uh, private reunions and meetings with uh, the big guys in the Bitcoin industry and in the crypto uh, currency industry, blockchain, and much more. And he will keep continue having the best um, advice from the people that can we know help El Salvador. Do we know if uh, Bitfinex has agreed or its sister company Tether has agreed to purchase any or a significant amount of these bonds prior to its listing? Well, I heard that a lot of companies are very interested to put money in El Salvador in the, in the Bitcoin bonds. So that's why we think this is going to be a very successful plan for our country. Are you able to name any of the companies? Not yet. I think that's announced. That announcement has to be, you know, from the president of the Republic of El Salvador. He's gonna give some names very soon. But uh, as an ambassador of the United States, let me tell you, a lot of U.S. companies are calling us to be part of this, to go to El Salvador, to have private meetings with the president, to have calls with him. And they're Americans, and they have the companies here in the U.S. Excellent. Well. Critics have nevertheless expressed concern over President Bukele reducing public information, removing over 200 judges and prosecutors under new caps and uh, on age and years of service, essentially accusing him of, of authoritarian tendencies. How do you address this criticism? Well, that's part of the, you know, public media that we have against the President Bukele, which there were on uh, the government for the last 30 years. It's not easy to lose power. It's not easy to, to lose uh, the way, the traditional way they're used to uh, have things done in El Salvador. Uh, but when you see that you have the 90% of the population with the President Bukele is because all the decisions we're making are for the big majority of Salvadorians, not for the status quo, for the owners of the big companies in El Salvador that used to handle and, uh, you know, financial the movements in the Congress, in the government. So if the people is, are happy with President Bukele, it's because they're feeling that, not only feeling, but experimenting that everything is changing for them in education, in health, insecurity which is very important issue in my country and because they're mm -hmm. receiving you know uh, the, tri the treatment that all Salvadorians uh, deserve that's why he have he has 95% uh, of approval you know mm -hmm. think about it why why because the Salvadorian people are receiving you know a special treatment right now 
and and for example in the covid mm -hmm. times they receive a lot of aid they receive the the vaccines the bad vaccines in the world right now we are uh, vaccinating tourism right we're ahead we're leaders in the region in the in the covid plan so the Salvadorian families are very intelligent and they're uh, experimenting well, a different way of it's an incredible project 